Hello, we are working on Waymaker today. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to start with the four chords that you need to know for the song. So we're going to do it in the key of C. Originally, it was done in the key of B. I've heard it done in several other keys, but C seems to be a good choice, mostly because there's no sharps or flats. So for beginners, that's a good place to start. Before I dive in, I want to give a shout out to Urshan College and our class piano group. Thanks for tuning in. And also to our church friends who are subscribing, wanting to grow, wanting to become better at playing in their churches and serving the kingdom of God. Thanks for joining us. All right, so we're going to begin with four chords. We have the F chord, C chord, G chord, and A minor chord. Those are our four chords. C major, F major, G major, A minor. So let's take it to the keys, see if we can get ourselves sorted out. I'm going to put the chords for the right hand. Most of the right hand is where I'm going to focus at the beginning. Right hand, you can opt to jump around and do bigger stretches between the chords. For us starting, I think that's a little more complicated and a bit more stressful. So we don't want to do that just yet. So I'm going to put the chords into an arrangement where they're very easy for the hand to reach and I think that will be more comfortable. So you'll see at the keys here, my right hand is on middle C, third finger you're gonna to go to F, and fifth finger you're on A. So this is spelling this F chord, C, F, A. The name of the chord is in the middle. And that's the first chord, F chord. We're then gonna shift over to our C chord. You notice that my thumb did not move, it stayed. So third and fifth finger, you shift down one key over, one white key, F, A to E and G. Same fingers, one, three, and five. So I'm just gonna take a moment and rock back and forth between those two. If you would join me and get comfortable with that position. If your pinky's feeling a little weak, bring that elbow slightly away from the body so you have a chance to get a little more support through here. Okay, thirdly, we have the G chord. I'm gonna move that thumb down half a step from C to B. Second finger, you were already, on that C chord, you were already touching the D. You're right on top of it. So just play your D. Pinky, you get to stay the same. No changes there. B, D, G, I'm gonna use the second finger on this chord, one, two, five. There you go. So we have three out of the four chords already. Yeah, that's it, three out of four. So let's rock between the second and the third chord, letting your hand feel those position changes. Just the second and the third chord. Here we go, C chord with you. And then small shift down with the thumb to the B. C chord, G chord. Lastly, we're gonna put in the A minor chord. I'm gonna walk down one white key. So we have A, C, E. There's that chord in root position one, three, and five. So all the fingers are one, three, and five, except for the G chord, one, two, five. All right, you might need to take some time and work on the G chord to the A minor chord and rock back and forth. That might be the most challenging move on this set of chords. Okay, so my true beginners out there, I'm so excited you're here. You might wanna pause the video just for a moment, go through those four chords, taking your time until your right hand feels completely confident. Pause here. All right, those of you continuing on, you've got those chords in hand, right hand, you're ready to go. All right, so what we're gonna do now is add the timing. So there's four beats that we're gonna feel very consistently. So you wanna have a very steady pulse, a heartbeat all the way throughout this song so that it stays very consistent. That works well for your drummers, of course. You wanna work with the drummer, not against the drummer. So our four beats, I wanna point out that this selection begins with an upbeat. You are here. That's the beginning of the verse. You are here. Here is the beginning of beat one. This happens all the time. Don't worry, don't panic. I'm just gonna say you are, and then I'm gonna start playing on the notes, or excuse me, on the word here. So let's try that at the keyboard. We're gonna count to four for each chord, okay? So each chord is a whole note equaling four beats. So let's see how that works. Here we go. I'm set up, C, F, and A. I'll say you are here, two, three, four, C chord, two, three, 
four, here comes the G chord. Two, three, and now to the A chord. Two, three, four. We're just pulsing on that beat so you feel a steady pulse. Steady heartbeat. I worship you. I worship you. That's it. Okay, so that's how you stay very consistent. Those of you that are thinking about what should we do with the pedal? Should we add the pedal? You can if you'd like. So in church music, we do harmonic pedaling. We just pedal with the harmony, with the chords. So right foot, you go into that far right pedal. If you have an option, some of you may only have one pedal and that would be the damper pedal. So what you'll do is just put your heel on the floor and then you're gonna push mostly with the big toe. The ankle is the hinge, so the heel sits on the floor, ankle, you are the hinge, big toe, you push against the pedal. So every time we count to four, you'll just hold the pedal down. Pedal, hold, hold your pedal. Change and hold your pedal. Three, four, change, hold your pedal. Three, four, play, then hold your pedal. Right, so change your chord, then change the pedal. Yeah, play the next chord, change the pedal. There you go. Right, so, so if you do it correctly, it'll sound seamless without any breaks. If you change the pedal with the chord, you might get a little bit of a hiccup feel like this. You hear it? So you want the pedal to actually change slightly after the new chord. That is actually correct. So if you want to try that out, if you want the extra challenge, go for it. If you're just getting the hand and the chords with the beats, hang out there. You're in good shape. Let's talk now about the left hand. Left hand, we haven't said anything yet. So left hand, go to the keys. You're going to find F with your fifth finger. I'm moving down about an octave from the middle C range just to stay out of where the right hand is working. So left hand, you're down here. This is middle C if you're following on the camera. And this is the C below. I'm putting my thumb there, left hand, opening up the hand so the pinky goes on F. You're simply gonna play the name of the chord. F, two, three, four to C. And we hold that also four beats. This is a very simple process. Three, four to A. Make sure your elbow is slightly away from your body to give you support as you play the fifth and the fourth finger especially. That will help you. Okay, so that's a very simple way to use that. Our left hand sometimes is a little weaker, not as willing to move, to shift, so we're just gonna keep it there. If you're a little farther down the road and you go, hey, I can do octaves, go right ahead. So if you feel comfortable with octaves, you're welcome to do that, and you can just span that out as you feel pinky and thumb reaching the same note F, an octave apart. You'll do the same exact timing, and whether you go up or down for the octaves, that's up to you, just play in the octaves will work as well. Okay, let's put it all together. Right hand, can you get on the keys? Left hand, find your position, and we're gonna put all that together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, you are here. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. In our midst, I worship you. I worship you. Congratulations. You made it. If you had a few stumbles, then you can pause, rewind a little bit, and keep trying until all of that comes together. It does take time. Practice, it's a dirty word, but you really have to practice to get this together with the coordination. Don't be discouraged, hang in there. You can do this. Okay, so um, the last thing I wanna say is there's a couple of other portions of the song. So when you get to the chorus, Waymaker, wait a minute, the melody sounds different there. It's not as high. Correct, the chords are, still the same, you guessed it. So for those of you that are trying to get to the chorus, you can try something a tad bit different if you want a little flair here. I would suggest the right hand, that you play the whole chord on beat one, then beat two, just gently pulse the thumb. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. So you notice on those first two chords, the F chord and the C chord, I simply just pulse the thumb. Hit the chord once, and then you can just gently pulse the thumb on beats two, three, and four. The reason I'm saying your thumb, that's where the melody is. So if your singers are having a little trouble, where is the tune, I can't find it, then you can pulse that thumb and they'll find it a little easier that way. It's the same idea for the bridge. So those of you that add that extra part in there, even when I don't see it, him, he's working, that part, you can play the same chords, you can pulse, it starts on that same C. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. So that kind of helps you on those lower ranges when you're doing the unison or the lower um, unison part there. You'll feel that and your singers can hear it. I'm always talking about ways to help your singers. The keyboard is, is really in charge of a lot of things, even without speaking, how you play your chords can affect what your singers are doing. So that's very important. Um, lastly, on the bridge, there is a build if you're doing that part. So sometimes I do a couple of things to make it sound more exciting, to feel more energetic on that bridge. If you wanna continue forward with me to that part, come along. If you need to pause here and just work on what we talked about earlier, no worries, I'm here either way for you. Okay, so moving to that next part, we'll have, even when I don't see it, he's working. So I do a pulse on one, two, three, play, new chord, two, three, four. So it's a play and hold for three beats. One, two, three, play it again on four and jump to the new chord, two, three, play, new chord, G, two, three, play, then A minor. So it gives you a little bit more of a pulse there and it feels more uh, energetic. And lastly, if you wanna do a full out cut, you could do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. You got the idea. So that kind of gives you a little bit more to do instead of just sitting there and hanging out all the way through with that same simple quarter note pulse. So those are ideas that you can do. Left hand, if you want to get involved, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So I simply did the name of the chord and the thumb above it. Pinky, thumb. C chord, pinky, thumb. G chord, pinky, thumb. A chord. Now that's harder, right? It's much harder because the left hand has to shift. So some of you are not ready for that. Don't worry, we'll get there, no problems. If you've already been playing for a little while, I'm teaching a one-room schoolhouse out here. So if you are a little more advanced, you wanna add that, you can. That gives you a more of a bass um, movement. So if you don't have a bass player, if it's just you and a drummer, that could be something you could add to add a little bit more roundness, more fullness to that part. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and give this channel a like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye now.